Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on factorization of polynomials. We'll focus mostly on cubic polynomials. A polynomial is defined as an expression that contains many terms where each term must have an exponent that is a whole number. x to the exponent 4 plus x squared minus 2x plus 9 is an example of a polynomial because all exponents are whole numbers and none is negative x to the power of half plus 2x to the exponent negative 2 minus x to the exponent negative 1 is not a polynomial because it has negative exponents and exponents that are fractions. In order to factorize a polynomial, we need to determine what its factors are. Remember that a factor is a number that divides another number without leaving a remainder. A factor of a polynomial is often an algebraic term that can be divided into another algebraic term. The factor theorem states that if f of a divided by b equals 0, then ax minus b is a factor of f of x. This sounds a little confusing, but once you do it, you'll see it's not so bad. Let's do an example to help us understand it more. Given an expression, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6, show that x plus 1 is a factor of this expression. According to the factor theorem, if x plus 1 is a factor of the expression, then if we substitute x equals negative 1 into the expression, we should get an answer of 0. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed plus 2 multiplied by negative 1 squared minus 5 multiplied by negative 1 minus 6. This gives us 0. Therefore, x plus 1 is a factor of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. We can carry on substituting factors of the constant negative 6 in order to find the other factors of the expression. Let's try this together. Let us try 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 2 multiplied by 1 squared minus 5 multiplied by 1 minus 6. This is equal to negative 8. Therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now let's look at the rest of the possibilities. f of negative 2 is 4. Therefore, x plus 2 is not a factor. f of 2 is 0. Therefore, x minus 2 is a factor of the expression. f of negative 3 is 0. Therefore, x plus 3 is a factor. f of 3 is 24. Therefore, x minus 3 is not a factor of the expression. Therefore, the f of x fully factorized is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to x plus 1, x minus 2, and x plus 3. This method will only work if the factors of the constant are whole numbers. Therefore, we need to use other methods that work regardless of the value of the constant. One of these methods is called synthetic division, and it helps us to divide a cubic polynomial by a binomial. To do synthetic division, we first draw a 5 by 5 table and write the variables in descending order in the first row. Then we write the coefficients underneath their respective letters. We already know that the binomial x plus 1 is a factor of the expression. This means that if we substitute x equals negative 1 into the expression, it will equal 0. Let's fill this into the next row. In the third row, we write x is equal to negative 1. Now, the next few steps will look confusing at first, but the more you practice them, the easier they'll become to remember. Why don't you take notes as we go along? The first step of the calculation is to bring down the first coefficient, 1. Then we'll multiply this by negative 1 and write the answer here under the coefficient x squared. Now we add 2 and negative 1 and get the answer 1. Now we multiply this by negative 1 and write the answer here under x to the power of 1. Now we add negative 5 and negative 1 and get negative 6. 
multiplied negative 1 by negative 6, and we get 6. And negative 6 plus 6 is equal to 0. We have now divided the expression by the binomial x plus 1. The values in the fourth row give us the coefficients of the trinomial. Let's take a look. These numbers are the coefficients of a trinomial in descending order. This gives us x plus 1 into x squared plus x minus 6. The next step is to factorize the trinomial. Factorizing the trinomial gives us x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. The other method we can use is to let the coefficients of the trinomials be a, b, and c, and then solve for the unknowns. Let's join Tebucho as his teacher explained this method in more detail. Okay, then, so where do we start? We start by looking at what we call the factor theorem. The factor theorem says that if f of b divided by a is equal to zero, then ax minus b is a factor of f of x. Simply put, if we substitute the x value of the divisor into the function and the remainder is zero, then the divisor must be a factor of the function. In order to factorize a cubic expression, we first need to look for a common factor. If there is no obvious common factor, then we use the factor theorem to find a factor. We substitute by trial and error different values for x until we find one that makes the expression equal to zero. So if the x value equals a, then x minus a is the factor. Are you ready to put the factor theorem into practice? I'm ready to give it a try. Here's an example we can start with. Firstly, we know that in order for x minus 1 to be a factor of the expression, it must go into the expression exactly. In other words, according to the factor theorem, if we substitute the value of x into the expression, we should get an answer of 0. The factor theorem says that if the x value equals a, then x minus a is the factor. If we apply that to our example, we can say that if x minus 1 is a factor, then x must equal 1. I can then substitute this into the expression wherever I see x and simplify. And I get that f of 1 is equal to 0 which tells us that x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial since it goes into the expression exactly without a remainder. That makes sense, but how does this help us to factorize a cubic function? Let me show you. We can use this example again. We have just found that x minus 1 is one of the factors of this cubic function. All that is left for us to do now is to find the rest of the factors and we will factorize the cubic function. Hey, that makes sense. I didn't think about it that way. But how does it help us find the other factors? We can actually do this quite easily by inspection. In grade 10, you learn that a cubic function is given by a binomial multiplied by a trinomial. We've already found one binomial factor, so all we need to do is find the trinomial. In order to do this, we would first need to find the a value and the c value by inspection. By inspection, I can see that if I multiplied x in the first bracket with x squared in the second bracket, I would get the x cubed in my original expression. So a must be 1. Using this method, I can see that minus 1 must be multiplied by minus 6 to give me the positive 6 in the original expression. So c must be equal to minus 6. All we need to do now is find the value of b, which is only a little bit more difficult. If I wanted to find the x squared term in the original equation, I would have to expand the brackets and collect like terms. Specifically, I would have to multiply the second term of the first bracket with the first term of the second bracket, then collect this with the first term of the first bracket, multiply it with the second term of the second bracket. In this case, minus 1 here multiplied by the x squared here, added to x here, multiplied by bx here. We know that these must add up to a negative 2x squared, which gives us an equation from which we can calculate the value of b. 
In our example, B would be equal to negative 1, giving us a trinomial, which we can then factorize in order to find all the factors of the cubic function. I just want to note here that if there are no x squared terms, we can still use this method to find the b term by comparing the x terms. That's not really as difficult as I thought it would be. Can I try one on my own? Sure, here's one for you. Factorize x cubed plus x squared minus 9x minus 9. I think I can do that. Hold on, how do I find the first factor? Last time we were given the factor. I'm afraid you're going to have to use trial and error. In other words, you're going to have to substitute different numbers into the equation until you find one that gives you a zero remainder. But that means it could be anything. Not quite. The constant will give you a clue as to the possible factors. In this case, the number will have to be a factor of nine. What are the factors of nine? The factors of 9 are plus or minus 1, 3, or 9. So one of these will give me 0 if I substitute them into the expression. That's right. I'll try 1 first. If x is 1, then I substitute 1 wherever I see x. Then I simplify and I get that f of 1 equals negative 16. So 1 isn't a factor. Let me try minus 1. If I substitute minus 1 wherever I see x and simplify, I get 0. So x plus 1 is a factor. Now for that hard part, finding the trinomial. Go ahead, you can do it. All right. I know now that x plus 1 is a factor and that this is a cubic function, which means that the factors are given by x plus 1 multiplied by a quadratic equation. To find x cubed, I'd have to multiply x by x squared. So a is 1. To get negative 9, I'd multiply 1 by minus 9. So c is minus 9. If I multiply out the brackets to go back to the cubic function, I would have to multiply x in the first bracket with bx in the second bracket and one in the first bracket with x squared and collect them to get the x squared in the cubic function which means that b must be zero. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And if you substitute that into the quadratic we get the difference of two squares. Do you remember how to factorize the difference of squares? Sure. x squared minus 9 factorizes into x plus 3 and x minus 3. You've done really well today, Debo. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to watch the Polynomial Functions Task video. You can learn more about polynomial functions on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.